Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play from me in Sweet Transit. Now, Sweet Transit is a city builder and logistics game where the only method of transport is via railways. Now, it's basically like Anno, very similar to Anno 1800, but instead of naval-based trade routes, you're tasked with creating an intricate web of railways to carry both resources and people around the world. Now, as they get their goods and services, residents will promote up to a higher tier, increasing their demands, but also their yield in taxes and it'll start to unlock new and improved infrastructure for you to use. Trains themselves need fuel and don't cut any corners when it comes to how they move around, so you're gonna have to start thinking about refueling stations, platform length, how you design the trains and how you manage the routes. So with all of that said, let's get started. Now I'm gonna be doing a daily playthrough of this just for a little while. I've completed the tutorial and built a sort of a starter city just to get my bearings, so I've got a pretty good understanding now of how to guide you through the early game and cover some of the things that tripped me up the first time. By the way, this is not a sponsored series, I just think the game looks really good and I was sent it early courtesy of Team 17 ahead of the game's launch on July 28th. I've also just been really enjoying it. Now if this is something you enjoy or want to see more of, please do consider leaving a like, sharing the series and letting me know what you think of the game in the comments. Also, if you've got any tips yourself, feel free to help me out and we can kind of learn together as we go. So, let's get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the main menu. I just briefly wanted to touch on the fact that the tutorial is broken down into four different categories. And if you're a little bit like me and you're kind of intimidated by the idea of train logistics, especially when it comes to overlapping rails, signals, that kind of thing, the signals tutorial is excellent. It's really good fun as well. It actually provides these optional challenges at the end where it says, now that you've learned signals, if you want to, try solve these little problems that it creates. It gives you these scenarios where trains are kind of colliding and it says like, fix it using only three or four signals. So it's really good. It makes you actually apply what you've learned. Anyways, let's jump into a new game. The game does generate a random world for you to kind of mess with. You've got all of these different various options. You can even create Europe if you want to get something a bit more familiar and try to place towns around where you would expect them to be. But for this playthrough, I've actually gone ahead and scouted out a seed, which I think is actually pretty beginner friendly. So we're going to go with this one. So if you want to copy my world generation and start where I've started, just copy what's on screen now and we can get started. Let's go. Alrighty, so we're in. So another great thing about this game so far is all of the quality of life features in the game. On the left, we have actually a list of objectives that we can do in order to unlock various other things and progress through the game. So the first thing is in building a warehouse. So we'll just click B and then we get our first advice screen. So I've actually kept the advice on. You can turn this off in the options if you want, but it'll sort of remind you and let you know how certain things work. So I'm not gonna be reading through everything, but I decided to keep it on just in case either you guys wanted to pause the video or if I kind of forgot how something worked, I could just quickly get a refresher on different things. So one of the things here is that the warehouse stores construction materials and they're best built in large areas without mountains and water. Otherwise you may struggle bringing in your hard earned materials home. So basically your first building is a sort of a global deposit box for all of your materials that you're going to build with in various towns. So you have to put that one down first. And it's got a really large area around it where you're not going to be allowed to build anything else other than like railways and logistics. So you're not going to be able to put a town right next to this. So that's why I think this map is a pretty good starting map because it's got a really large area of just open space around it and it does recommend that you have open space. So we're just going to slam it down somewhere around here. And that gives us now access to our various resources on the top bar. We have timber or wood, cut stone, bricks, and coal. So that's our warehouse unlocked, and that's given us access now to building our very first village, and so on and so forth. So the next thing is to actually build our village hall. So building the village is basically recommended that you're nearby water. So I'm gonna build it somewhere up here. So the village hall's main building, from here you'll expand from a single building on undeveloped land to a thriving village. So try to build it near the water. So you want to have this little radius here, the kind of grey box around, we'll just push it up over the water a little bit. I've made mistakes in the in before when I had it just too not quite close enough to the water and then you're not able to get your fisheries up and running. So we'll build it kind of overlapping the water just a little bit and that should be totally fine with us. Alright, so it's telling us now that we need workers. Let's just rename the town really quickly, keeping continuity with my Anno 1800 series. This is going to be swords. So to get started, we click the building, and then it actually gives us all our building list options. This will expand over time when we get various things. So our first thing is now to reach 20 laborers. So in building a house, it's going to cost... It's a 2x2. Two two. This is what they, they kind of can store, and then the inhabitants can go all the way up to 30. But in the beginning, we're only going to have a little handful. So I want to build about 20 of them to start with. 
The population needs to reach 20, but I want to get 20 houses as well. And that's because, well, we'll see it when we get to it. But basically, fish will generate at roughly the right amount for 20 houses. Okay, so let's get a dirt road placed down. God damn, the music is jiving right now. Absolutely banging. Guy's going crazy on the piano. All right, so something like that. So everything has a road, everything's connected. People are starting to grow. We can see them coming out of their houses. Awesome. So one of the first things that we need to do when we reach 20 is actually give them their first service. So if we click a town or a building, we can see on the bottom left, laborers residence, right? This is how many are in there, up to five at the moment, based on what we're giving them. But we know they can grow up to 30. This is their happiness. They're actually super happy for some reason. And then they're making a little bit of gold. So six coins per inhabitant or per, per household at the moment. So their first service is that they need water. That's the service. Then they have goods that they need. So they need fish, potatoes, bread, and clothes. So giving them fish will provide 10 extra people in this household, extra money, and so on and so forth. So they need one per minute. Everything needs one per minute. So that's why I built 20 houses. So that's 20 per minute. 20 fish per minute is what we need. First thing we need to do though before we get to the fish is actually give them water. So they just need a water tower. They actually don't need to be near the water for that. I guess they automatically gather it or it rains. Whatever. Come up with your own thing to justify how they get it. But they get it. So we'll just put one right down here. The, the range on this is actually really short. I'll put another one down maybe on this side. And that gives everyone their water. And essentially, that's going to require five workers for each water tower. So 10 in total. So pretty easy. Pretty basic stuff. So the next thing is going to be building a fishing dock. A production facility built on the shore for fishing. Inhabitants need access to fishing docks in order to be fed. Okay, so you can actually see, just really quickly before we go any further, if we click swords, we can see all the information about it. We have 100 people living here out of a capacity of 1,200. We have just the laborers class working here. Later on, you can get different other classes. We have fish, coal, potatoes, bread, and clothes that can be stored here. Other things can be stored later on. We then have the attraction value, the money that the place is making, and then the range. I'm actually not 100% sure what the range does. This, by the way, is the buildings that are connected to the village. So a village is sort of an all-encompassing unit, as long as everything's touching this and expanding off of this place. If we were to build another village here, they'd be separate and they have different build lists. So we can actually see we've got 20 houses, 54 pieces of road, you know, and two water towers. So that's kind of how you can see what you've got in the town by looking over here, or you can hover over this and just look there. It says laborers residences times 20. Okay, so we'll get our, we'll just get rid of those two objectives and we'll start to build out our road to the coastline. So we'll just build a nice straight road that leads right out and we'll get a fishery, fishing dock. So you put one there. We'll just keep it to one for now. Extend the road so it's connected. And now it's just saying like, oh, you can rotate structures if you want. But also a building like this, if you've played something like Anno 1800, it needs to store its goods. So it needs a storage facility roughly nearby. Now a storage facility can service up to five other things. So, you know, about a third of the way down this tooltip, it says supported production structures times five. So I'll just pop it right about here, maybe push it there so we can build a road a little bit later. We can rotate the building if we want. I'll actually do that, we'll rotate it sideways. Stick it there, and that blue line is showing us the range that this building has. One out of five means one building is connected to it successfully, and they're getting their stuff. So there we go, we can see people carrying their little boxes, they're carrying the fish, bringing it down to the storage house, and that's going to be 20 fish per minute. So if you hover over the building, very similar to Anu again, we can see 20 per minute, storing up to a maximum of 400 at the moment. And there's 20 people working that building. So if we select swords now, we can see that they're starting to grow over 100 as they're getting their fish into their bellies. And we can see down here that there's 70, there's 80 people that are rested. That basically means that they're available for work. And then if they're resting, it means that they're just taking a break from work. So they actually rotate around. We'll talk about that a bit later. And there's 30 people working, right? There's five in each tower and 20 people in the fishery over here. So that's all good. We're flying ahead. Right, the next thing is to now actually start thinking about going a bit bigger than this, right? Build a coal mine. So if we have a look around, we can see by zooming out, there's coal in various deposits all over the map. Our warehouse is there Warehouse is there in the center. So we've got coal here, here, and here, and then a patch of three coal over here. I think we'll just start over here. Seems a bit easier to just get this one maybe active first, and then we can kind of expand and get the other ones a bit later. We only really need one, I think, for the first 10 or so trains. So we've actually got plenty of time to do this. Or to keep it at one, I should say. So we'll go down to our Industries tab. We'll select Coal. 
a coal mine. It's going to require 40 workers, and it produces 60 coal per minute. We'll talk about this ourselves a bit later, and just get building now. So we'll just have to build that on the actual deposit, and then it's going to need little modules that improve the production and improve the capacity. So that's coal storage, there's four of them. So one, two, three, four, just like that. You can put them down any way you want. You can even rotate them after the fact by clicking and then pressing Q and E, just if you wanted to make things look a bit different. For this type of building, it's really not that important though. So one of the first things we'll do with this building is we need to give it its own station. So that's how trains can get here, pick up the goods, bring it back, and also deliver the workers. Now in future, there's two deposits here. This one's a bit far away from those two. But in future, we can build a distribution center, which, oh, it actually could reach all three. That's really good. So we'll use that in future. Actually, we can start with that now. So a distribution center basically allows you to build a road to connect to the buildings uh, so that multiple buildings can feed into one. So basically, the rule is this. A station, it actually just came up with the advice there. A station can only connect to one building, a production building that's making something which would be really annoying, right? We don't want to have to build three train stations for these three resources. So instead, we'll build a distribution center that can encompass all three. So we'll just make sure it's all covered in here and we can build this just a bit further out. Just like that. I think this will work. So we'll build a road that just connects straight down to this area. Maybe we can build it a bit nicer than that. And now we can see just here on the UI that it says coal mine times one, because we have connected it. Now this was out of that range. I don't know if that's gonna matter or not. We'll see. I'll be learning something new myself. But then later on, when we want to expand this coal mine to get more stuff, we'll just connect them up to the other areas and that'll be fine. We don't need that now. We don't have the workers. We only need one right now, so we're fine. Okay, so instead of connecting the station to this building, we're gonna connect the station to the distribution center. That's the only big change here. So let's go small station. We'll say that we want to connect it. Uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, I guess actually we could do it lengthways. Yeah, sideways would be nice. So we'll do it this way. A train could pull up and use a station as long as there's at least two rails parallel to the station. All right, cool. Got it. So coal mine one. Yeah, we'll just call this coal mine. I like to use Roman numerals instead, so we'll use I. Okay. So when selecting the actual station, we get different options to build. Um, so we need to build platforms. So you can actually determine the length of your platform. This does matter for the length of your train. So I'll just build, I don't know, maybe eight out each, eight either side. Don't know why I struggled to say that. There. And the middle of the station acts as a um, platform as well. So that's a really long platform, actually. It's probably a bit too long. Well, it doesn't really matter for production, I suppose. So that's a really nice, decent, decent length of platform. Just build this again. We'll build another one on the far side of it. So one, two, three. Build it all the way out there. And then to connect these two platforms, we'll just build a little bridge that goes across. So it's a little walking platform to people to cross over. Just to make it look nice, we'll add another one there. So there we go. We have a nice little platform. So now we'll just build our actual railway. So we'll just build two lines going through here. And I'm going to build a single line network and have a closed loop of it. So it's just going to be a single line that loops around in a, in a circle, um, which isn't the most efficient thing to do, but it's easy. And for starting out, I think that's the way we'll do it. So in order to do that, uh, let's just send this out this way and just join this up this way. And we'll add the signals just a little bit later, but to get started, we don't really need to worry about that. So we'll just turn this up this way and rotate it around and link that into that one. Don't worry about the arrows in the facing direction. You can determine the direction with signals a little bit later. And uh, just to make this look a little bit nicer. By the way, full refunds are on, I think. So you do get um, everything back if you make mistakes. So I don't know why I can't just... I want to just turn... I guess you have to do it that way. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. You have to close the gap a bit sooner. Okay, and this will just come down and around. And we can always change this later and, you know, relay it out a different way. So our town is pretty far away. It's all the way over there. And we haven't actually given that a station yet. So this is what we know. The first little loop is going to come in this way. So we've built a coal mine. We now need to build a train depot to actually make trains and send them out. So I guess we'll do that next. Um, so yeah, let's just give this a pretty much straight line heading all the way out here. Out there. And then we'll just turn it this way. Okay. So if we zoom out further, we can just see like that's how it looks. Looks fine. We need to always connect up the warehouse as well at some point. Let's just continue along. 
do a quick and dirty. Basically straight down this line. And just join it up roughly in range of that warehouse. It doesn't have to actually line up with it right now. We can extend it out a bit later. Okay. Yeah, I'll just actually send that out pretty much straight and then turn it somewhere here. All right, so we've almost closed our loop. So we have to focus on the rails, railway station for here um, in order to make this look a little bit nicer. <clears throat> So the way this works is, Swords needs its own station. Um, so just go to Logistics, build a station. Needs a station, and that's going to then, it has a range, right? And the range is really important. You, all these people want work. That's what that symbol means. They're looking for work. And the only way they can get work is if they're in range of a station. So we want to make sure our station covers everyone that's in there. Now don't mind the gray box around this. That's not actually the range. The range, as you can see with the blue line, goes further than it would seem. So we'll just build a little road network out further very quickly. So I know that this is going to be a group of houses. We do something like that. Something like that. We can probably put the station somewhere here. And that will give us a pretty good starting position for it. We can always change it later if we need to. Hopefully we don't need to though. That looks pretty good to me. The range is pretty decent. So we'll start right about here. I wouldn't like to live next to the station, but you know, some people do. <laughs> uh, okay, three either sides. That's pretty central to the place. So that's Sword Station, we'll call it. Now, I think towns can actually have multiple stations, but for now, we'll just use the one. Uh, so we need platforms. So let's just start with the platform. We had eight either side in the other place. So the scene as this is our central town, eight either side is probably a good idea. Just clear a lot of space for it early on. So is that eight again? Yep, it's eight either side. It's a really long platform. And then we're just going to double it up like we did before. Boom. Create a bridge crossing over. Now that bridge is a platform bridge. I learned this a bit later, that you need a different kind of bridge to connect the road. So if I wanted to build a town now on the other side of this railway, we need a, a kind of a road bridge, which is different. And we don't have that unlocked yet. So that was something I struggled with a bit when I first played. So don't fret if you're trying to build that town and it's not really lining up, that's why. Uh, across the bridge, that is. Okay, let's do that. We'll just link these in together, just like we did before. Okay, and we'll lay the signals out in a moment. All right, and let's join that up. There we go. That is our closed loop. We have closed the loop. So we can focus on the actual to-do, which is let's unlock the... We want to unlock trains, obviously, and uh, we need to build a train depot in order to do that. So we'll just enter into logistics mode again. I need to think about where I'm going to put this train depot down. I think a good place to put it will be near enough to the coal mine. And that way... The first time it goes through, it'll get, it should pick up its, oh, actually, no, I think it'd be probably better to go near the uh, warehouse. Yeah, I, d I guess it doesn't really matter. All right, let's just start with it. It's where you're going to build yourself a fleet of trains. You can always build multiple. To build a train, select the, okay, cool. So we're given 100 bricks, and that's going to allow us to get our first train depot, and the length of it matters, and the direction matters. The first time I built it out the wrong way, and then I tried to pull a railway at the back of it, that didn't work. So make sure you're facing the right way. So right around there would be probably fine. And then we'll extend this down and just connect out. We're only going on a one-way loop, remember? So we don't need to connect it out that way. Or well, not planning to right now. Because I'm just a little too stupid to figure out multi-lane railway networks. They just get so complicated, I get bogged down. But this is all fine. So we're opening up signals now. You can do tutorials about it. It'll just take you into another tutorial actually for signals. But I've pretty much understood how I need to do it. So we'll just start laying out some signals. So basically, we just need them before and after various junctions. And trains will kind of work out. But we always have to keep that same facing direction. We don't need to connect the warehouse up yet. But again, just over at our town swords, we'll just split these like that. And split these again in a similar fashion. So we've created color blocks. And that's a block that says like, okay, only the train is going to run on that block one at a time. And that's what blocks do. So we've got huge blocks here. And if you want, you can actually just create almost infinite blocks by holding drag click. And then you can spread them out automatically um, by the further you drag. So we could do that, but I'm just going to be a little lazy because I can't actually see the whole thing going around. And just manually kind of put them down for now. So something like that's probably enough. We don't really need many more there. Uh, we could do one closer to the warehouse. Uh, another one about there. All right, nice. 
So that's just going to be a straight line. Just block that off as well. Block that off. There we go. So this is what I think is anyway like a nice beginner friendly way of doing things. And then, whoops, sorry, I hit the microphone. As you begin to understand things a bit further on your own, on your, by yourself, or as you want to get more adventurous and complicated, you can start going with multiple lanes and junctions and stuff. And these things here, <laughs> it's not Bitcoin. It's actually prefabbed sort of blueprints. That's what the B is for, of complicated junctions. So it's kind of done some of the heavy lifting for you, and you can save your own, I believe, as well, by blueprinting things and copy and pasting them. Excuse me. But um, I kind of think that takes a little bit of the fun out of figuring things out yourself. You could just do that, and it would solve a lot of your problems. But I think it's part of the fun is figuring it out for yourself. But it's, it's good to know it's there. Uh, if you do get bogged down, at the very least, you could put one down and look at how they've done it. And then figure, you know, kind of work backwards. All right, cool. So that should be all of our signals. They're just little blue kind of dots there. So we need to now actually produce coal. So we want to get our first train going. So we'll click our depot. We can't actually rename the depot, I don't know why. But anyway, add train to queue. So get rid of that build list. So the way this screen works, it took me a while to figure it out, is it's done by presets. Everything is a preset in here, and then you're adding multiples. So what we're going to do is start off with um, an ST. Everything is an ST10 at the beginning, and then we'll get different trains later on. We'll go ST10, and what we're going to actually need is people to go get delivered first. That's the first thing we need to do is bring people to the coal mines, get them working. So we'll start with a SD10 passenger train. That's our first preset. So we'll add on the SD10. We'll add on a coal tender. We don't need to do that. We've actually created quite a long loop. Um, so we could run out of fuel. And if you run out of fuel, the train will just operate very, very slowly for a long time until it then complete, just comes, comes to a full stop. So we'll add on, a, add on a coal tender, which adds 1,200 potential fuel to it. Standard train has 500, so we're adding like over double more fuel for it to carry. That does take up a slot though, so that's something to worry about or think about. And then we'll add four of these. Four passenger wagons, an ST10 wagon. That's 160 people that can be carried. Um, and there we go, so that's done. So we just click build. It's gonna add it down here. So that's basically in the depot now, waiting to come out, but it needs a route. So we'll add our, make our first route. The first route's gonna be obviously dead simple. We'll go route swords. Oh, no, actually, we'll call this route the worker route. Workers, okay? And we'll change its color. So workers, what color should they be? Mm. Well, maybe red is fine. Let's go with red then. We'll just get rid of these other colors. They're from different saves that I have. So we've added this red color. So any red train that comes by, we'll know, we know that it's going to be taking workers. And so maybe we'll just make it uh, a little darker. Bit more of a maroony kind of red color yeah all right cool so set the destination we're going to go from swords to the coal mine and then here's the logic of the route so we wanted to swap workers we could have it do other things just pass by don't know why you'd ever want to do that i guess but you can i suppose if you wanted to manually direct it to a different station that has less traffic you say just pass through here Visit, load, unload. We'll just go swap. We want it to swap its workers, and you can add filters about the type of worker that you want, but we've only got one type right now, so it's fine. And then you can add a wait condition. It says until done, but I'll say for time passed, 20 seconds. So don't spend any longer than 20 seconds at any of these places. That should be fine. You don't need to do that, but I like to do that just to keep things flowing. That could cause problems, but it shouldn't. All right, so that's our route. That's the route done. We'll just close that down. We'll go back to our train now in the depot, and we'll say add to the route workers yeah so that's gonna color the train red the same color as the route and we'll just go deploy now you're given fuel for the first train that's as long as we could make it by the way based on the length of this place so we did well with that and we'll call this um passenger one train all right off we go we're flying now, something I didn't know about this game until I got it sent to me from Team 17 is that it's a solo developed game, which I'm sure I'm sure he's had little bits of help from other people. And the music, I think, is done by someone else. Um, but it's actually from a... I'm, I'm after forgetting the developer's name. Apologies. But it's from a 3D modeler, an X3D modeler of Factorio. And I remember when I first looked at the game, I was like, it looks just like Factorio combined with Anno. And then it's like, obviously, it's the same person, I guess, that did it. So you can see that inspiration there. But it's just quite cool. Trains in Factorio always thought were so awesome, that kind of steampunk look to them. And now we've got a more, um, I guess, realistic interpretation of trains. Now, you can actually rotate the game as well around uh, by pressing Shift-A-D. 
to rotate around, so we do have different directions. But I'll try to keep things the way they were, just to avoid confusion. So, I'll just pause it. We're after pulling up at the station. We can actually check the train. We can check its various kind of wagon, cargo, whatever you want to call it, uh, freight. And if we hover over it, we can see what it has got in it or what it's doing. And if you click all, you can see what is on the train completely. So nothing is on this train at all at the moment. And it's down to 84% fuel. So we had 100% coming out. It's down to 84% now. There's no fuel here to pick up. Um, there is 176 fuel in our actual warehouse. So we can connect that up a bit later. So it's loading with people now. You can see everyone's getting loaded up. And that's based on the fact that all these people are here looking for work. So they're all loading up. They count as working as soon as they get loaded up. So there's like 100 people left in the town not working. So 100, it's going to fill up the whole thing, basically, because it's 160 capacity, wasn't it? Something like that, 4A, 12, 16? I think so. 160 capacity. And then we know that it's going to head out to the coal mine here. And basically, the coal mine... Uh, if we could just find it. Where the hell is the actual building? There it is. Uh, needs 40. So we've way overfilled our train. They're never going to work the job. But that's okay. It's fine. Doesn't really matter. We'll deliver them to the other coal mines or other places later on. So if we zoom out, we can just see the train moving along its little line. It's doing its thing. Its max speed, I think, is 30 kilometers per hour. It's down to 76%. Now, it's not going to pick up coal the first time it comes here, but in future, it will. And the way we can actually store more coal is if we go... Uh, to the station itself. The station has this building here, coal storage. It only adds 10 extra storage for each one, but it could be worth it for a coal depot. So we'll just pile on a bunch of these. Um, I was going to say they're free. They're not free. They do cost money, but they are free for... They don't cost wood or anything like that, so they're pretty easy to build. So there we go. Just tons of storage. Just a big coal depot for these guys to come into. And here they are. Coming in for the first time first 40 I guess are probably going to get off for an even amount from each uh, carriage and they'll start working their thing. So we have our little problem here. Not enough workers. That should go away as soon as we do it. As soon as we unload these guys. And there we go. We can actually see them. They're there now working away. There's a little foreman checking things out. So the next time this train's going to get a bit low on fuel, admittedly. But the next time it comes around it'll refuel and should be fine from then on out. So, this train has to go all the way around this loop in order just to get back to the town, which is why it's maybe less than ideal. You know, you could cut a, a line that just goes straight over here to avoid any other stops or anything like that, but I'll just leave it the way it is for now. Just wanted to be aware that I am aware of that. Alright, so, we need to produce 200 coal. While we're waiting for it to produce 200 coal, we'll build a new railway station here. Very similar to how we've just done it before. And then, like I said, in the future, if we need to change it, we can always change it. So, again... In fact, actually, to make this go even quicker, we could just literally copy and paste one we've done already. So we'll just go blueprint, copy all of that, I guess. Actually, we're copying the rail, so what we want to do is drag it out from here. Okay, perfect. And we'll just bring that over, rotate it around. We know the station is right there. Slam it in. And there we go, so we have our signals in place already for us and the rail in place already. It doesn't copy the buildings. I don't think it's just for the logistics of the actual things that are included in a rail network. All right, and then we could just attach this to the network like that. And then attach this one back. And then we'll just add little signals and junctions so that it's, it's totally, well, it's not even a junction, it's just signals to say, make sure it's clear before you go onto it. So just something like that. That one has its signals already. I'll just create another block here in case things start to get backed up. Create another block here as well. Okay. Good. And there we go. Easy as that. We've just added the warehouse now as a uh, as a stop. Actually, you know what? I've totally forgotten. And I don't know why I didn't copy thinking about it. The platform. The platform isn't there. But that's okay. You just add the platforms out either side now. I thought it did copy the platform, but I guess not. And we'll just build a little bridge crossing over to connect these two. Now, as far as I've known, I've seen screenshots where you can connect multiple platforms and, like, extend this out even further. You can have a really, really big, large depot. And a warehouse is usually where that's going to happen. You're going to have, like, ten rails eventually on these things. Um, okay, so where's our train? There it goes again. If we check the carriages, we can see they're full of people. Now, the interesting thing is that people get tired when they work and they want to come home. So this train has to come by and pick these people up again. 
and we'll see their average rest is 84%, the productivity is 100, so when the rest starts to fall down too much, uh, I think, I guess to zero, probably, then their productivity will fall until they get picked up. So we've got eight people who are tired, and that's going to keep increasing over time. Now it says there's 40 people who are tired. So that just shows that this is taking a little bit too long to get these people out of here. The efficiency will start probably falling over time now. Um, but it'll, it, it does take a little while for it to happen. So we'll come in with fresh 40 people, and then 40 people who are tired are going to load up. And we'll see in brackets it'll be a red 40 instead of like a, a yellowy kind of white 40 there. And then we'll know like, oh, it's bringing people home. They have to go back home, and then they have to rest. And they turn into people back at the town. It'll say, we'll have a third category here that'll say resting. So the people that have already worked, they're not available for work for a little while. They are now resting for the rest of the day. Okay, but we're all good. So we've produced um, the amount of coal that we needed. Now we need to set up sawmills. Tree nursery, wood storage, flatbed wagons, and stuff like that. Um, so that's what we've got unlocked. And now we need to produce 100 wood and reach a population of 400 laborers in order to be able to build potato farms and so on and so forth. So we could just add this stuff to our network. So what I'm going to do is, I guess maybe out on this side, because, yeah, this would be perfect, actually, because we're going to be taking it to the warehouse. Construction materials are handled in the warehouse. So the goal of building something like wood would be get it close to the warehouse and bring it straight in there. So we're going to put it somewhere near these kind of clips and stuff, just somewhere along here. So what we'll do is we'll copy this platform area yet again. Oops, mistake. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't copy the platform, but whatever. This makes it still a lot quicker and a lot easier. These are very long platforms, by the way. I don't think we need to be doing it this big, but I suppose it's fine. Uh, so, something like this. Yeah, something... I'm just thinking about this area. We could use that for quarries, maybe, but maybe we'll do it somewhere else. All right, so just do that. Boom, in you go. That's going to automatically add the signals in. The lights are coming on. There is a day-night cycle in the game, but if it gets dark and you don't like it, we can just toggle it to whatever time of day we want. So when it gets completely dark, it does go very dark indeed, and your mouse sort of illuminates things. So we'll just leave it back at sort of a sort of a daytime. Let it go to sunset for a little while. So the station is missing missing connection, right? It needs some sort of work here. So this is going to be the sawmill. And we're going to build a distribution center because one thing I learned is that this ex needs to expand very fast indeed. So we'll build a sawmill. And we'll just start one off somewhere over on the side here. Oh, actually, we need to get the distribution center first. So we'll build a distribution center right at the back. Touching the um, actual station. Um, and just want to see that range. So it goes all the way up to the rocks. Perfect. Love to see it. So sawmill. There we go. So put a sawmill just about touching the platform and put it right up to the edge. That's going to be our first sawmill. And then we'll get a road connecting these guys. And then this can have storage. So extra storage. We can build eight of that. So we just store up even more wood here. And then this is the tree nursery. So very much like Anno, if you've played that game, uh, you're building out the modules of where you want the actual work to be done. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to get dark now, so I'll just let it stay bright until it's daytime. We'll keep it like this. All right, there we go. So that's the tree nursery. But of course, not enough workers, so we need to bring people here. So the benefit of setting up the route the way I've done it is now we can just go onto the worker route and select a new destination, the sawmill. And then we just swap workers, and again, they should just get dropped here. We can actually see number one, number two, and then number three. And that's the, uh, you know, the order in which they're taking them. You can just drag and drop that to change the order around. But this one obviously makes the most sense on our sort of closed loop network. Um, but obviously, if we're going to be making wood, we want to take it away. So while we're waiting for the trains to come around, we'll make a new route, a brand new one called uh, Construction, I guess. Construction. And we'll maybe make this route somewhat green for wood, you know, kind of a wood foresty color. So green, there we go. Uh, maybe we'll darken it so it's not too jarring. So nice green color. Select a destination. We're going to start at the sawmill and we're going to deliver it to the warehouse. That's where we're going to have to go. So let's call the sawmill sawmill one. And can we rename that warehouse? We've got warehouse station. That's what we want. Station. There's only one station right now, so that's fine. Alright, there we go. Our first people should be arriving. We should see this building operational. Lots of room for expansion as well. 
And there we go. We can see people appearing. Chopping them trees. And they have their extra wood to store up. So we can actually check this now. We can see 60 per minute. Storing 5 out of 1,000 storage in total. And that's going to be... You can just check the station. If you don't want to click individual buildings, you can always see things at the station. Alright, so... This is where things get kind of start to get a bit more interesting when we have we're actually producing goods now. Uh, so we have coal, which is fueling the train. Obviously, if we check our train we're at 83% fuel, so it's obviously refueled since we last looked at it. So that's totally good. Now the salt mill itself, that's operational. What we're doing, we're making our construction route, but there's no trains on it. Now you might be tempted to have one train do multiple things, and you could certainly do that if you want, but I'm going to have a different train do it. You can add multiple different tra um, types of cargo on to the same thing if you wanted to. All v various lengths and everything if you want to get really complicated, which maybe you'll need to later. But to keep things simple early on, in the train preset screen, that is our passenger preset. We now want a new preset, and we'll call this one ST10. Um... Well, we got to check what it's going to be taking. So different car, different wagons take different things. So a gondola is going to take coal, stone, grain, clay, and whatever that other thing is there. Hops, I think. This one is going to take timber, cut stone, and bricks. And I struggled for ages when I was first playing, thinking like, hey, this takes stone. Why can't I get my stone? Stone and cut stone are very different things. We'll get to that soon, I'm sure. So let's go with, we want, this is going to be an SD10 flat wagon because i know that flat wagons are going to take kind of the bundled resources right timber that's been processed cut stone that's been processed and bricks that's been processed so let's just add four of those obviously we need our train and our coal tender make sure you have it in the right order so just drag and drop that around and there we go that's it done so now you can see we've got two presets right so it's a little drop down menu this is the first one that's the other one so we've got ours we'll just go build and there we go we need to put it on a route so we have the worker route, which you don't want it on. We want it on the construction route, obviously. And there we go. So we set it to be green. So it's going to be green. And we'll just hit, we'll just get rid of that. Hit deploy. Out it comes. Speed time up just a little bit. And there we go. So this is now going to go, again, because of my inefficiency, it's going to go all the way around to get to the timber first and then go to the uh, warehouse to drop things off. Okay, and you can actually see that by the colored outline at the moment. So in future... What you could do as well, uh, ultimately it's going from there to here. So, you know, does it ever need to always go around that? Not really. We could separate the line out so we bypass the town. So let's do that. Why not? It would shorten the route and uh, money is practically unlimited. So let's just do that. So somewhere here, we'll just take a turn and go straight the whole way. And maybe we'll build some different industry or something in the middle then to make use of this route later on. Okay, there we go. So the train will go along this route next time around. It'll come straight out of the warehouse, go like this, and it knows that, oh, I don't need to go through that town. And we could even do the same here yet again, right? If we know we don't ever need to go to the coal mine, we could swap and just go straight down this way. That's where things start to get a bit more complicated. It's funny, though, we kind of wanted to go to coal because it could refuel. Actually, no. We can drop coal at the warehouse so it can refuel at the warehouse, okay? So that's the way we're going to do it. So we'll, we'll build a bypass. It makes seems to make sense to do it. So we'll build a bypass right here. Okay, so a secondary bypass. And just make sure we block them all off with signals so that things don't get jammed. And there we go. So let's see, will they take the route already? It actually won't because I guess it predetermined the route, but next time it will. That's our construction. So we'll just speed up time. The game runs super fast. Now we can follow the train with F. Speed up. And we should be able to see this train getting loaded up manually now. Or automatically, I should say. There we go. It should load up fully. There's three tiers to it. There we go. It is maxed out. So we've got 40, so 50 on each carriage. So we're carrying 200. Should be able to carry that all the way back. So reach a population of 300 laborers is the next thing. So we'll let the train, excuse me, do its thing. Oh my god, excuse me again. Actually, we need this wood. Before we can build more houses, we need wood, right? We've just enabled, by building that, something I didn't talk about, by building the first lumberjack or the sawmill, you enable upkeep. So we actually have an upkeep cost now for everything. So our production is 60 at the lumberyard, and our upkeep is 28. 
And what we're upkeeping is all the houses. Each upkeep of the house has one. We've got 20 houses, but also the coal mines, everything. Everything has an upkeep. That's the biggest struggle with the game is providing all of the wood and storing it all. At least, not biggest struggle. I'm sure there's bigger struggles than that. But early on, one of the first things you'll contend with is having to pile this up. So as soon as this starts to get unloaded in here, you'll see it all being piled up. Let's just watch that happen. So there we go. The resource is filling. And then a nice thing is this graph will start to kind of play out where we can see it rising and rising and rising and then over time it'll start to fall with the uh, demand. Okay, so let's add our extra houses in. Uh, first thing we want to do before adding the house is get another fishery. We know that we've got enough for 20 so we'll get another, so in order to build in the town you have to click the town. Get another fishing dock. So we'll build three, why the hell not? We're going to need them anyway. Um, not enough people working. Yeah, so we're short on workers now for the town, but that's why we'll put down the extra houses and they should be fine. Yep, that's fine. It's just telling me about roads. Of course I know that. Duh. Alright, we'll get another water tower. These guys are lacking a bit of water here. So yeah, there's just a bit of a gap there. We'll pop, pop it right down in the center here. Maybe we can build a, uh, a road bridge across this road. Uh, later. So there's not enough people to work this. Hmm. There will be soon, though. They'll fill up and they'll take the job and then they'll get their water. I have no doubt. Alright, cool. So we're at 316. Let's just speed up time then. We'll switch the time of day off. And there we go. We're filling up. We've already run out of wood, though. And then this train has to make that whole journey again. So it's about to pick up another 200. We did just build a bunch of houses, obviously. And this is now carrying, uh, caring for four different things. I wonder, can you turn off buildings? Or do can you pause them like an anno? Not that we need to. Should be fine now. So anyway, in clicking the town, we can see our f um, food here. Our fish slowly building up. Production is 60. Consumption is 30. So it's really easy to see statistics on how that's gaining. And that kind of graph line will be slowly building over time now. Capacity of 700. We have enough workers now. They've grown. We've solved that little mini problem. Uh, so we are reached our population. We have a potato farm unlocked. We're good. Potato storage and a potato field. Reach The next milestone now is going to be to reach 800 and then build a potato field. If you actually click the town, you get different objectives to do. They do different things now. So we've got, you know, two different tiers of things. So we have a fishing dock, all of that. Water tower. Build a market is the next thing, which will unlock the next task for us. So a market is a separate service building. It's basically just like putting down, you know, a church or a water tower. It's just a building that they need near them to keep them happy. That's basically all it does. It's sort of like a building where they say, like, they trade from it. Um, so they just kind of want it. So let's just build one there. It almost reaches across the entire town. So we'll have to build two. Now, the thing is, it's like, okay, it seems arbitrary, right? But it's actually, it does require a workforce. So that's why the the placement of these things is important. So I suppose maybe we'll get rid of a couple of houses, put it in the center of town. Should reach everything then, yeah? If we want to be careful. So, sorry guys. Going to get rid of you two. And we'll put down some extra houses maybe on the outskirts. They've got water and everything, so they're fine. And we'll put a market down right here in the center. Uh, we could also put a water tower down if we wanted to, but it seems like we're good. We can put ornaments down later on. Uh, there we go. We have our lovely little market. So that's servicing everybody. Everyone's happy. What are we up to? 422. So we're going to have to expand a lot. So let's, let's speed up a bit. Um, so we'll just build these roads out just straight in. A, I'm going to build a pretty ugly looking grid looking town. Try to break it up somewhat. Just for a bit of variety, visual variety. Okay, something like that. Got some extra houses that can fit in here then. Ah, but we're out of wood. So we'll just add in a couple that we can. Remember, every house we add, it adds upkeep. So we're just getting more and more expensive all the time. And of course, we're going to build a bridge that goes across to build on the other side of this town. And that's because the station is here. And if we want everyone here working, we have to go across. Um, so interestingly, if we just bring this line out a bit further... That's the max distance of who anyone built in here is going to be able to work here. How, or sorry, be ferried across the map for work. Whereas, I'm not too sure what the rule is with getting to work down here. They don't seem to have a range, so I think that might be okay. We could build more industry on this side of the town then. So this will be our max distance for the railway, right? So anything after that line is going to be all industry. So we can build stoneworks and other things, local buildings. So... In order to fix one of our first problems, which is that this train is taking a bit too long to come by for our wood, 
Whereas we know we're producing enough, so we're probably building up a backlog already. We are. This is 185 here. What we'll do is we'll make our second train. So the easiest thing now is just to go with the preset. We already have the flat wagon. We'll just go build. We'll just add it to the construction route and just deploy it straight away. So we've got two trains out and about already. Both of them are going to be carrying pretty much as much as they can get. Pretty close to each other, actually. But that should get the keep this from falling off a bit too fast. And then obviously soon we'll just build another nursery and we can get even more wood. All right, so we, the goal, like I said, 800 is what we need to reach. The other thing we can do to build taller, instead of just adding more houses, is actually provide them with potatoes. So we'll start adding that to the network now in just a sec. And actually, in fact, let's just do it now. We have the, so yeah, I'll put a market down out this way for them, because that's the one thing they're lacking. I don't know why you need a market on worker buildings, but I think it improves efficiency, because when they don't have it, it says here, Product, production is inefficient. It can be improved by ensuring workers are well rested, upkeep is maintained, and all needs services can be reached by road. So even worker buildings, I guess, need a market and things like that. So nice little location for it would be right here, I guess. Seems to Actually, just right across from the storage. Why not? Mm, yeah, actually, no, it, it tucks in. Let's just tuck it in. <laughs> there you go. They have that. So they're going to be a bit more efficient. So we can have up to 60 houses. Because we have two, four, six. So we've actually got good room for expansion. We'll just expand that a little bit more. Oh, I'm out of wood again. <laughs> just keep running out of wood like immediately. That's why we have these trains doing it though. All right, let's get this to curl around that way. Curve down there. There we go. So they're lacking a little bit of water. I have to wait for our trains to come by. It, they're taking the shortcut route though, which is I love to see. They're even taking this one. The signals are working. Uh, they're working, but not very well, right? So let's get another block just placed down here. And another one there. There we go. They should get moving a bit more free-flowing now. You only need signals to be the length of a train, really. So they are obviously just a bit too spaced out at the moment, but it's all right. For the amount of trains we have, it's totally fine. And now that we've got two lanes, they should divide out so they don't stop, you know? They, it's not backed up by one waiting for the other. They just go right behind each other or fill up the second lane. So it keeps things moving pretty nicely for this early game. All right, so potatoes. That's the next thing. So maybe we could add potatoes into... So we know that potatoes need to be delivered to people. <laughs> um, so I guess the smart thing to do would be maybe build it in somewhere in here in this loop. And that way the station is somewhere here. So as the trains are coming along, they deliver straight in there and they could maybe loop back... Hmm, this is a, an outgoing loop. So we'd have to bring in another one. Uh, maybe potatoes in then here. No, actually, potatoes here would be fine. It just means to get back to here, they'd have to go around and then come down and around. So we could build another thing where it's like, yeah, we cross back and just go parallel to it. Doesn't really matter. We could figure it out. But I think here would be a good spot for it. Actually, the town is going to be built out that way, so maybe not. Maybe we could build it out this way then. There's water here as well. Just trying to think, we have to also keep clear of the warehouse. You can't build too close to that. Hmm. <laughs> okay, then. I'm going to build it here. Why not? This is where potatoes are going to be made. We'll shift along that way, come along, and go up to the town. It's a bit of a long route, but it's okay. There's going to be lots of... We need lots of space for it, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, and again, if we make mistakes, we can always change it later. So let's just copy and paste the rails that we've got here. Yeah, put it on the inside, I guess. Okay, cool. Now, we don't... It did copy the platforms this time, by the way. I don't know what the difference there is. It didn't do that last time. Anyway, just get rid of the coal storage. We don't need so much coal storage here. Um, and I just want to check something. The trains that are... They're getting fuel. I don't know where they're getting their fuel from, though. The warehouse, is it? There's 54 coal here, just in storage. Yeah, so they're going to run out of fuel soon. So some, I have to tell some, the coal thing, I guess. So which one was delivering coal? Oh, we don't have anything delivering coal. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so I need to make up another route that takes the coal and drops it in the warehouse just so that trains that are coming by can refuel. 
The ones that are hitting that coal route anyway, the passenger train, for example, that's fine. But the construction one, they're not going to be getting coal anywhere, so they're going to run out soon. It's on 89%. Yeah, but as long as when that number runs out, they'll run out. So we've got two things to do then. Let's do the potatoes first, and then we'll get up the coal route. So there's one of the signals is left over from before, so let's just get rid of that. Okay, so this is fine. So potatoes. Potato farm, got it. Uh, again, the distribution center is probably the first thing we need. And then we'll hook up these other ones. You're running out of, yeah, wood is gonna be too low for all the upkeep, so we need more wood. Ugh, so much stuff to do. Okay, we'll get more wood, because that is gonna be a bottleneck. We'll do that first. So we can easily just click this, press B to get another building. Just add one right there. Totally fine. Extend this out. In fact, we could even wrap it around all awkwardly, but it would look it'll look fine when we just zoom out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it then for that. Add more storage, I guess. Is there a problem putting it here? There is. Uh, okay then. I'm just gonna cancel that because it'd be better to have the building next to it. Just have this go up like that. Don't really need it to be honest. The storage is pretty high anyway. But the total storage is now going to be 2,000 here. Yeah, so that's, that's loads. I think we're good for storage. All right, so that's going to be increasing the amount of wood we produce here. And people are working it already because we are we just delivered extra workers here. So totally fine. We'll go back to daytime for a bit. So potatoes, that's the next thing. Uh, so we'll call this potato farm. Uh, one, I guess. And we've got our distribution center, so very similar thing. We just get our potato farms, pop them somewhere up the back. Um, but it needs to be in range of the distribution center, so I just want to make sure I didn't mess that up. So the range goes out to about here. So somewhere around there. Okay, just build that road out. So that's connected, you can see potato farm one. If you wanted to check this to know that's connected, it says sawmill times two. It's connected to both with the road. Perfect. If you want to build across, by the way, across the rail, you just need one of those road bridges I talked about earlier and that'll connect it up, but you don't have them yet. You have to unlock them later. So you have to build it just on one side in the beginning. Um, so very similar to last time, we'll just go like this to add some storage buildings in here. Not the most efficient build, I'll admit, but you know, whatever. What are we up to? 88, 115, and there we go, 120. Okay, that's the first potato farm. Not enough workers. So we have to add this to the route where passengers get delivered. Aha, I've done something very silly indeed. Yeah, the passenger route has to go around that way, doesn't it? So it's a bit awkward to deliver passengers to here on the same route without a proper way to come back from the coal thing. See, that's a bit of a mistake. That's what we call a classic mistake. <laughs> hmm. All right, unfortunately, that's just an example of an error that we're gonna have to put up with. I'm gonna have to delete these buildings. I'm gonna rotate the potato farm so it's along here. That way it's just on the same route. Apologies if you identified that before I did, but it's the way it is. Um, so yeah, let's just have to get rid of all this. Luckily, we get our materials back, though, so it's not too bad. Destroy that. Keep the... We might as well just keep that there for now. Let's just copy and paste that in the way it was. Actually, we can copy and paste the whole thing again. Yeah, this will work. It's actually much better that we're doing it this way, thinking about it. All right, so this is going to be the potato one. I always want to put an E on that. I don't know why. Because potatoes, I guess. All right, so let's just delete some of those extra things that were copied over by accident. Let's get the potato farm down again. Need the distribution center first. Build a road out from the distribution center. This is probably a better way of doing it, actually, so we can see where that road can connect to. So we know where we can start our farms. To maximize the space. 
I'll uh, we'll build from this side in first. So that's where the road can go. two, three. There we go. Good. All right. So they need their workers. What's the problem here? Uh, we need to fix the signals. The signals are busted. Oh my God. They're facing the wrong way. Oh my God. That's really important. Uh, let's just pause time really quickly. So I didn't think about that for the um, blueprint. I guess the signals do have a direction, right? Didn't, uh, I didn't have it rotated because I want the, the station on this side. So that's why it's all messed up. That's fine though. You just get rid of these signals, put them down again. All right, train's going to keep going. That's fine. Good to notice that, though. The only other problem I see with this, I guess, is trains that are backed up here are going to be blocking that um, that cut-through. So the cut-through might have to be built again a bit, for a bit earlier, but it's fine. <laughs> so let's go back to our routes. We'll go to the passenger route, the worker route, right? So we're going to swords, to here, to here. So we'll just throw in the potato area, potato farm one, move it up before the coal mine. So now the passengers are going to get delivered for the workers to here, then the coal, then the timber. So that's fine. We don't have to do anything else with that route. Uh, and there's so many people on that that the, we should totally be fine here. So the next one was then construction of wood or the addition of wood. Wood is fine. We have lots of wood being built up. Not enough workers. That's fine. They'll get delivered. The inhabitants are unhappy. They need water. We can get them that now. Uh, yeah, let's start it on this side then. Well, we know that it should probably go about there. Now we can add in some more houses. I'm just breaking it up to make it look somewhat more organic and more interesting looking. Cool. And they need their own market. We can fit a market in here as well. Again, that could probably come, could, could have come out a bit further, probably, but that's okay. We're up to 600 now. So what's the next thing? 800 is what we need to get to. We could just build more houses. We've got the uh, wood for it now. Oh, we have our uh, crossing road, by the way, the wooden bridge now. That's good. Just doing this so I can get a kind of an idea of where we can actually build uh, with worker range. All right, nice. So there we go. Uh, yeah, actually, let's just switch this road like that. That's still OK. Just delete this section. And that's a little grid for us for a pocket of houses. They have their market. They have everything else. All right, we have little offset houses. Looks kind of cool. We'll have ornaments, by the way, that will bring up attractiveness. So it does work out to have. I mean, there is a reason you do it like this to an extent. Okay, so these houses, they're not working. These people need work or they want work, so we'll sort them out. Get them delivered to the potato farm and other places. Where is that worker route? It's the red train, of course. It's coming around now. So we can see 30 people on this train are actually rested, or they, they want to rest, so they need to go back here. Uh, yeah, let's just keep expanding the town. Why not? We'll just keep throwing houses into it. We, need, we can go up to 60 at the very least. One, two, three, four. There we go, 60. So we'll just copy another fishery. Okay. This can supply five buildings. It's currently supplying four. And wood is pretty much gone, but we'll get some soon again. We can just see it being piled in all the time. Love to see it. All right, cool. Things are working out pretty well now, I think. Uh, we're just waiting on that first delivery of people, so they're on their way. So let's just speed up time. Let them get there real quick. And there we go. They're working potatoes. So now we need a food route that's going to deal with delivering those potatoes, those spuds, back to our home. And that'll be the last thing I think we do for this one. So route, we're just going to call it food delivery. Uh, hmm. Maybe food should be... 
green. Food would make sense to be green, right? So we'll keep it as green. Maybe we'll make it a really light green, though. Yeah, so dark green is forest. This one is different. So um, the first one's going to be, let's just say, swords to uh, potato farm. Don't swap workers. This is a food delivery. So I guess maybe we pop this one first. Load. Unload. Filter. Don't need to filter, but I just want to make sure that was working. So yeah, potato farm to sword station. So we're going to go, it's going to go in here, wrap around all the way down and around to the town. So it's a, it's a super long route. But like I said, I'm just a little intimidated by setting up things a bit more complicated than this. For, so for the beginning of the game, we haven't even unlocked everything yet in terms of junctions and stuff. So for the beginning of the game, I think it's just best to keep a, a, a simple route like this, at least for me. All right, so that's that done. Food delivery. Then we just need to make a train that's actually going to do that. So we'll add another train to the queue. Of course, we've just unlocked by building a potato farm. We've got ourselves a box wagon, a B10. We'll add a new preset. We'll call this the ST10. ST10. Uh, box wagon. And that's going to then just be pretty much like the other ones. You know, coal tender. And then four box wagons. And that's that. Oh, well, that's interesting. The impossible has happened. We don't have enough coal to actually build our first train, our train. So we'll have to deliver coal back to the warehouse. I did forget to do that. So on this construction route, um, well, that uses flatbed. Hmm. I'm just trying to think how am I going to do this now? We need a gondola to do deliver coal. Maybe we can make that one for free, though. I don't know. So let's just add a new preset. We'll go ST10 uh, Gondola. Do the same we've done before. So actually, there we go. If you just don't have the coal tender on it, it's totally fine. It's good to catch that one. I thought, like, oh, no, I'm after soft locking the game but no we're fine we get given a little bit of coal for free just in the first initial thing so we'll just build our gon gondola this can take coal so we'll just build that one first we need to make a new route that's just going to be its own route and this is coal resupply so this needs to go to the coal mine and then go to the warehouse we could even then go to swords so anyone passing into swords gets a little bit of coal Right, and we could just unload some coal there. So switch that to unload. Uh, yeah, maybe instead of until done, until maybe just a little bit of time pass. So we'll say at the warehouse, just drop in like, I don't know, 10 seconds worth of time. And that way it should fill up, I think. So just add time pass on this one as well. 20 seconds in swords. All right, cool. So people going into swords will get f refueled automatically. Uh, right, so let's just go onto the coal resupply route. Deploy. Call this a coaler. Speed of time just a little bit for this train and while we're on the route. So coal resupply. We're heading to the coal mine to load up with loads of coal. Obviously, we just had coal there for ages, but I didn't do anything with it. Let's just add another logistical route here. So if we look at our blocks, that's a really long block, which is such a silly mistake. So let's go like that. Let's go like this. Let's go like this. Let's go like that. All right, we've just divided that up, so now trains can get flowing much quicker. It's going straight to the coal route, so it's taking the short, shorter distance towards it. Again, we just did the same thing with my lazy blocks. And then anywhere we've created these new junctions, you obviously need to be putting down these things. There we go. All right, off we go. Totally fine. In you go. All right, it is loaded up with coal. We can see it on the back there, 50 in each carriage. That's gonna get delivered to the warehouse super fast. Could obviously improve these signals. I'll probably space them out in between episodes now a little bit better. This is actually out of coal because we're out of coal, so nothing's refueling anymore, but they should just drop that off down. This might even pick it up at the same time, maybe. Oh no, it's a shame. It, it will on the, its next route around, but what it's going to do is go really... Oh no, it did. It did. Awesome. Nice. Good job. Alright, so we can see that it's down to 25. So it actually dropped half, which is perfect, and we're going to drop the other half here. So before we get out, we'll just add some coal storage 
so that when places come by here, they're going to add that little bit of extra storage here. Dropping coal. Anything that comes by here will get back up to 100% then as well in the future. Perfect. All right, so coal is being delivered. The last thing then to do was the food delivery, which is inactive. We want to make a new train. We've already um, built the thing for it. We wanted the box wagon train. Build it. Beautiful. And uh, pop it on the food delivery and deploy. So a lime green train that's going to be picking up potatoes for the first time. We'll just watch that happen and that'll be the end of it. So we've got no road for some of these houses here. Just let that continue in the background. Good. What are your problems? Can't go to work without a station nearby. Oh, so they're actually too far from the station. So these houses can go. <laughs> so we can use this for other service buildings and uh, things like that. So yeah, we have to build a town out this way now, and that way we can just extend it to the same range as this. Kind of works in a radius. Alright, that's our passenger train picking up all the people. Everything's being worked on just fine. Potatoes are being made. So, they're working less efficiently. Hmm, I wonder why that... Oh, they ran, we've run out of wood. So again, we're actually producing enough wood, right? If we hover over this, production is 120, upkeep is 88. Um, it's just my signals are a disaster, because I didn't space them properly so trains are just waiting for like other ones to go by and then when they get low on fuel they all slow down and get backed up but it'll now that we have coal in the bank everything will get fixed and be sped up no problem the problem should all go away yeah so look at that all that wood's been delivered in the other trains are dropping their coal in so these resources have been filled just nicely cool great all right, so we delivered food. Uh, we just delivered a batch of potatoes already for the first time. That's going to now grow our population. And our population... Yeah, we've already reached that 800. So we now have access to a quarry, stone, stoneworks, park, fur, foliage, and props. So now we can actually put down, like, ornaments to make the place look a little bit nicer. If we wanted to. So just little things. Um, so just some fir trees like that. We can have little bits and pieces, little props. To make the town look just a little bit more alive, maybe. Actually, these would look better up here maybe put a park down in the places where we destroyed those lovely families homes you know that kind of thing whatever we'll make it look a little bit nicer in the next one so that's gonna be it for this episode a little messy a few mistakes along the way some people now we've got lots of people looking for work we'll give them plenty to do the interesting thing in the next one is gonna be we're gonna be building stone but in swords so we're gonna have to build a quarry bring the stone in and then we'll have buildings where it gets refined into stone uh, into cut stone but then we have to deliver it back to the warehouse out here so things are gonna get just a little bit more complicated with a bit of a refinery network this is a good symbol by the way to have not a bad one there's not enough work it's gonna make them unhappy don't worry about that just means a little bit less taxes but it's a good thing to have too many people not working because then it's like oh yeah we've got room for expansion obviously we're plenty of room now to put down the extra uh, quarries and things. And the quarries have to be put down by mountains. So maybe we'll create more fall off um, split roads or railways to do that. All right, so a little chaotic. Kind of have it wrapped up, though. That's going to be it for this episode. And I'll see you tomorrow in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends. 